This is NFL Daily presented by Mizzet and Main, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Cam Rogers. That guy right there is Harris Rubenstein. Just went through the NFL playoff picture. We're going to transition now into some MVP talk. We're going to count you down from number five to number one in yes. terms of our power rankings. Let's check in with number five in our rankings here. Mr. Russell Wilson, quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. Look, he is Seattle's offense. Yeah, he is Seattle's offense. He's Seattle's whole team. And I think with, with going forward with this team, they got to get him another option in the receiving game. I get it. Doug Baldwin's a nice receiver. And he's had a couple good years now. But they need to give him a, a legitimate target on the outside. Paul Richardson has not turned into the guy they needed him to. Too many injuries for him. I mean, as good as Jimmy Graham is in the red zone, it's just not there. And and, and you've kind of seen the past two weeks, haven't you? I mean, they, they totally folded against the Rams because the Rams' defensive line was just better than anyone on their entire offense outside of Russell Wilson. And again, he struggled this week against the Cowboys. Only 93 total passing yards, two touchdowns, yes, but only 93 total passing yards against the Cowboys this week. He's had a great year. It hasn't been the best Russell Wilson season of all time. He has folded down the stretch, but I think he deserves to be on our list. All right, so there's Mr. Russell Wilson there checking in at number five. By the way, talking about the Seahawks, Tyler Lockett. He was supposed to be a big, promising wide receiver for them. Has not emerged Got, got injured all. and just hasn't been able to come back yet. All right, there's Russell. How about number four, Carson Wentz, quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. The big debate here, and we want the Eagles fans chiming in on this one. Should Carson be an MVP conversation? I, I think he should be just based around how amazing his 13 games was. I don't think he should win. I, there's no way he should win, but should he be in the conversation? Should he be getting top three votes? Absolutely. I mean, he still leads the NFL in touchdown passes with 33. He's still thrown for a crazy amount of yards. He didn't quite reach that 4,000 yard mark, though I think he would have by the end of the year. But I think his touchdown to interception ratio of 33 to 7 is great. I think he needs to work on his completion percentage next year, only hitting 60% of his passes, which how much they throw is a little bit under what you'd expect. But look, Second year in the NFL, guy's going to end up being top three in the MVP race. I think it's fantastic. You know, I think we'll have a better answer once the season's over. If Nick Foles folds big time and the Eagles are one and done in the playoffs, I think there is an argument to be made that Carson Wentz deserves to be in MVP conversations and, and have that kind of consideration. So we have a reaction poll for the folks at home. Should Carson Wentz still be an MVP consideration? Hart for, of course, a sad face. No, he's hurt. You just can't do it. I'm going to throw up a heart on this one. I say, of course. I think his statistics have just been too good. Again, this doesn't mean he's going to win. Like, at the same time, someone could be in the MVP race and not win. Like, for instance, Kevin Durant in the NBA last year was in the MVP race, but he wasn't going to beat out James Harden or Russell Westbrook or LeBron James, but he was still in the conversation. I think Carson Wentz deserves to be. I think he will get some votes for it. I think it's fine as long as he doesn't win. All right, so throwing those votes, ladies and gentlemen, we're seeing a lot of sad faces, some hearts popping up as well. Keep them coming here in NFL Daily as Carson Wentz checks in at number four in our MVP power rankings here. Number three, Mr. Drew Brees, quarterback for the New Orleans Saints. And you can't look past that completion percentage, having a great year in the touchdown to interception ratio department as well and can pad the stats a little more this week at Tampa Bay. Yeah, and a, and a fantastic season for Drew Brees, but a very un-Drew Brees kind of season. The passing yards are there, but touchdowns way down. Only 22 touchdowns for him is crazy, but that completion percentage of almost 72% is absolutely insane for Drew Brees, especially in that kind of offense. They got rid of the air raid stuff. They traded Brandon Cooks. They tried to make the offense a little bit smaller, keep things in front of them, and run the ball more. And I think the offense has – I think they've gotten another year, maybe two years, out of Drew Brees because of this change in offense. All right, so the big question here with Drew Brees, and I want the folks at home to weigh yep. in on this one. When you look at his collective career, where does he rank in terms of all-time quarterbacks? Where do you put him? This one's tough. I think he's top 10. I'm not quite sure if he's top 5. I think that there are certain quarterbacks you have to put ahead of him. I think you put Elway ahead of him. I think Manning's ahead of him. I think Montana's ahead of him. Marino? I, no, because Marino doesn't have the Super Bowl that okay. Breeze does. And you could think that statistically they're about even. That Super Bowl kind of bumps him up. But I have Brady, Manning, 
uh, Montana, along with Elway. And I think he's either at the number five or six spot, depending on what you want to do with someone like a Brett Favre, depending on maybe what you want to do. There are a couple other options based off of the Troy quarterback Aikman. you want to get. Troy Somewhere around there. I think Drew Brees is either number five or number six. I wow. don't know if he's top three all time because I think Brady, Montana, and Manning have that all locked up. Peyton Manning, not Eli Manning. I think Drew Brees is right outside the top five, if not number five. I see Matt Brady depends chiming what, in. He depends says top you, ten. Depends on what you think about Brett Favre because Brett Favre has so – he played for such a long time as all the statistics, but he threw so many interceptions. His, the end of his career was so wild. Drew Brees has been consistent. He's been a total winner, one of the best statistical quarterbacks of all time, but he didn't have the winning teams that Brett Favre had. He had a lot of 7-9, 8-8, you know, 6-10 teams in there. So it's tough to really match up. I would put him at number 6 right behind Brett Favre, still top 10, 100%. Paul saying bottom 20. George chiming in saying definitely in the top 10. Says... Top bottom five as well. There's Matt Brady's 20. comment. So bottom twenty. A lot of differentiation here, Harris. I I think it, it it really depends. I think for him, it really comes down to Brett Favre and Brett Favre and him because I think Elway, Peyton Manning, and Tom Brady and Joe Montana are still ahead of them. But once you get into Brett Favre versus Drew Brees, that is a opinion and opinion thing by himself. I personally would have Favre ahead of him, but I want to see what Brees can do next year. Because Breeze has one more year left in the tank. I think he gets there. All right. We appreciate the comments, ladies and gentlemen. Keep them coming. We have them on screen for you. You can be a part of the show here on NFL Daily. Okay. So there's Drew Breeze there in our MVP power rankings. Like I said, he plays at Tampa Bay this week. Big game for New Orleans. The next player in our list had a fantastic game a week ago. There he is, Todd Gurley, checking in at number two. And you know what? Credit where credit's due, Cam. When we started on MVP Power Rankings way back in week one, uh, you were a proponent for Todd Gurley being on this list every single week that we had this. And so far, he's shown you up well. He's been fantastic. He's been the best running back in football this year. I love Le'Veon Bell. I think Le'Veon Bell is a better running back, but... Todd Gurley's had the better season. I mean, his total receiving yards this year have been absolutely off the chain. So many touchdowns for him. So many yards. I think it's fantastic. Todd Gurley, look, he's coming off a fantastic performance against the Tennessee Titans. 22 carries, 118 yards, 10 receptions, 158 yards, two touchdowns. Thanked the fantasy community because he knew he absolutely had been killing it the last month and a half. Uh, took to Twitter to do that. Got a lot of retweets for that one. Uh, a lot of big, happy, uh, fantasy football owners out there, I'm sure. But Todd Gurley, like in terms of reality, the centerpiece of Sean McVay's offense. And, and I think it's good because when you think about what Sean McVay had in Washington to kind of work with, he never has had a, a, a player on offense even close to the level of talent that Todd Gurley is. So just, just fantastic to see him doing this well, especially coming off of you know that injury he had in college. Took him a couple years to get going. And then, by the way, Shut, shut up, Jeff Fisher. You get no credit for this at all. You trash to a Todd Gurley season. Very clear that you're bad. Very clear that it was your fault. No thank you, Jeff Fisher. No thank you. So Todd Gurley has a real shot, I think, Harris, to get the MVP trophy. Yep. I think there's a big debate here that should be had in the coming weeks in terms of if Todd Gurley could surpass this guy. Checking in at number one, Tom Brady, quarterback for the New England Patriots. He struggled the last few weeks. He has struggled the past few weeks. Four touchdowns, the five picks in the month of December. He is so, so far thrown five, a, excuse me, an interception in five consecutive games. The first time he's done that since 2002. It's not to say that he isn't still the GOAT and he isn't playing, you know, up to what you would think a 40-year-old is. He's playing way above that. But at the same time, you know, he wasn't great in that first half against Buffalo. He's much better in the second half, going 15 of 18, about 170 yards, and uh, two touchdowns in the second half. But we'll see what ends up happening. This week for him against the Jets is the big one. He hates playing the Jets. His career numbers against the Jets are not what you think they are. He only averages about 240, 250 yards, and a touchdown and a pick against the Jets in his career. So if Tom Brady can come out firing in this one, I think he needs to put his stamp at the end of the season. Because as of right now, Todd Gurley's beginning of the season was great. Or, excuse me, his end of the season was great. Beginning of the season, not nearly what, what Brady's was. So, I think if Brady puts a stamp on this game against the Jets, the trophy will be his. But, as you'll see in our comparison here, both of them are having fantastic seasons. I think these are the two best players in their positions right now. 
One week left for both these players to really cement themselves, although we might not see much of Todd Gurley in that game for L.A. Which, that could hurt him. Which, you know, again, I understand that, you know, Sean McVay isn't in the I'm getting my guy in MVP trophy business, but I'm sorry, he might also should be in that business. I think it would have been great for Gurley to play that last week. He would have smoked the 49ers defense. The best game he had through the first eight weeks of the season came against the 49ers defense. So I think it's kind of a shame that he's sitting this week, but... 2,000 total yards, 19 total touchdowns, a yards per carry of almost five. This dude is like Jamal Charles combined with David Johnson. Like he's just, he's just an absolute freakazoid.